Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a little chat video. Yeah, I do one of these every so often, in case you're new to the channel, you may not have seen one, because I don't do them that often. Like, not once a month, not once every two months, just whenever there's stuff to talk about that wouldn't really fit in another video without standing out and being weird, or worse, if it's something where I want your feedback, it might go unnoticed because of all the surrounding stuff within that particular video. I hope that made sense. If it didn't, I'm not surprised. I do talk a lot about bollocks quite frequently. In fact, all the time, non-stop, my mouth's open, it's bullshit. Anyway, I should just shut up. I got a list of things I want to go through, and I just want to cover them all. This is the best place to do them, so again, it's not polluting a different kind of video, like a Let's Play or a Game Poke video, or worse, a Sega Head episode. I'd hate to have one of them polluted because I want to ask you a question or there's something I really want to say or show or whatever. So anyway, the first thing on my little list that's over there is um the simple and obvious thing. I just want to say thank you to everyone that's subscribed lately. Um, at the start of this year, the channel had... Would you, for other channels, it wouldn't be a lot, but for me it is. I had quite a booming in, a boom in viewers and subscribers. It went a bit nuts. And it was fucking great. Uh, it was very unexpected. I don't know why. Um, maybe it had something to do with, you know, shorts. I've been experimenting with them. I didn't know if I wanted to do anything with them in particular. Uh, but everyone I know said you should do something because... YouTube is trying to compete with TikTok, and it's doing it via these shorts. It helps your channel if you do something, but I didn't know what I wanted to do, so I tried uh, the idea of converting the old slice of retro videos I used to do. I was thinking maybe I would try and convert them into a uh, shorts format, but I never, I didn't like anything. I tried toying with it, I tried editing to see if I could get anything to look good, but the thing is, all shorts have to be vertical. They're not horizontal like this, they all have to be the other way up and they look crap like that well to me they look crap i wasn't happy with anything i did but i thought you know what fuck this it's it's not working so whilst i was toying with ideas of what didn't seem to work i was just doing some vloggy stuff as you may have seen having a friend round making him play the flintstones uh how i play games in free time when i say free time i mean for lunch time at work because that is my fucking free time yay so I was just pissing around, and the views on shorts is stupid. I mean, I'm, it's ridiculous how many views you can get on a short compared to a normal video. It's like, oh, you fuck. So I still don't know what I want to do with shorts, but for now, if something silly happens or I don't know, I, whatever, I'll, I'll do a short for it just because. Like, I've been playing Metroid Dread. Mate, fuck that fucking game. If I had any idea before I went to play it, if I knew how much of a fucking boss rush mode the whole game is, I'd have put it on easy, just so I can still enjoy the game, because I've been playing it on normal, and it really fucks me off, how you spend ages fighting a boss, and then when you finally, finally kill it, you go like a few rooms along, there's another one, especially when you're where I am in the game, near the end of it. I'm so near the end of it, every five seconds there's a new fucking boss or something to kill, and it's just... The game isn't fun anymore. I just know if I had played it on easy, yes, the first part of the game would have been a cakewalk. But at this point, I'd still be having fun. Now I'm not. I want to break my fucking controller in half of that game. I will beat it! And I'll tell you what, if you haven't played Metroid Dread, or you don't know much about it as to why it'd be frustrating, just Google Metroid Dread Emmys. E-M-M-I. Fuck those guys. Fuck them hard. That went off the rails, didn't it? That isn't even on my list of things to talk about, but I sure as hell spoke about it, and that's why I have these chatty videos. So I can ramble, <laughs> apparently. Um, other things going on behind the scenes. Uh, the the book I've been working on, the Audible book uh, for Soul Reaver. Um, not everyone here will know about that, but yes, I am working on an audiobook. Uh, I'm not getting the time I want to put into it, but the time that I am putting into it, Oh, I'm really happy with what I'm doing. I feel like I've given myself the limitations of what to do without being unfaithful to the game, but the free roam I've given myself, where it's like, this bit of the game was always very vague, or there was just nothing there anyway. I could fit in an extra bit, and as long as it doesn't pollute the story of the game, 
then I would say it's it's a welcome bonus. You think if Soul Reaver ever got remade on PS4 or whatever the fuck, you know, um, there'd be extras. And there'd be DLC, but there'd be fucking extras. So I just think the audiobook can have that, and it doesn't cost anyone anything extra, because it's a fucking book spoken to you. So it's going really well. Um, I wish I had more time for it. But then again, this is why I had to quit the podcast. Because I had no time, no free time to do this book idea. So something had to give, something had to go, and it was the podcast. It had to go. And it's a shit because I miss doing that. I, I miss the podcast. It was a lot of fun. Um, maybe one day I'll bring it back. I don't know. Incidentally, if you've never heard, the, it was called the 16 Bitchin Podcast. It was on YouTube and places where you could just listen to it. But I'll put a link to one of the videos, one random one, one I really like, so you could see what the podcast was like. If you're into it, if you don't want to listen to it, don't. It doesn't matter. It's just in case you do. Uh, I had a lot of fun doing that, and I kind of miss doing it. I do. But as long as I'm working on this book, it's just, it's not possible. There is no more time in my life. There's fucking zero. And now my wife is on about she wants to move house. It's like, oh my god. <laughs> Fuck it. Can we have my funeral first? Can we do that bit first? They say two most stressful, stressful things in life are funerals and moving home. I, I'd rather go through my funeral before we go through moving home again because I just fuck, like, fucking Jesus, fuck, I hate moving, fuck. Next thing on my list is, um, this is a weird one, one I want to comment on. Uh, so the Shenmue Sega Head video finally got done. That one took a long time, but that was because of work more than anything. I had taken on a second job. That's all done, and because it was all done, I was able to wrap things up on the Shenmue video. And I'm very happy with that video, how it turned out. Every time I do a Sega Head episode, I try to add a new element. Something I've not done in previous ones. Um, it might just be something really simple, like camera lighting, or the style in which I deliver my thoughts on a game, or blah blah blah, that kind of crap. And other times it might be, I've got this joke I want to do. But it's a fucker to edit. Because it's... I don't do Photoshop. I've never Photoshopped anything in my son in life. I wouldn't have a first clue how to do that. So I'm using limited software to do things beyond, you know, outside the box. I'm trying to do things outside the box you wouldn't be able to do with my regular software. The software, for example, is Filmora, Wondershare Filmora, and it's an older version. I haven't updated because I'm that kind of cunt. Uh, but in the Shenmue video, there was stop motion bits. Um, it turned out really well. I'm very happy with it. I think it fitted the goofiness of the Sega Head episodes. Uh, the joke did what it was supposed to do. It was funny without going on too long or any of that crap. I'm quite happy with it. I had no idea how to make a stop motion video. I only had the idea in my head. And it was like, people say you just move an object, take a photo. Move an object, take a photo. I didn't do it specifically that way. I had the camera rolling. I was recording video footage me moving the console every so often to where I wanted it to be and then in editing I would just take a snapshot from the video I don't know why I wanted to do it that way I guess it was my fear that if I forgot to do a photo or if a photo didn't work or whatever the fuck it'd be a mess and I also didn't want a million damn photos on my camera I thought in the editing software it's unavoidable but it doesn't mean I want them on this as well so here is a very fast forward snippet of what it was like in editing just to do a bit, I mean a bit, of stop motion footage. Here we go. <laughs> As you can see, it's fucking nuts. <laughs> it is nuts. All for one joke. But I really wanted to do it. Them Sega Head episodes are the most fun I have with this fucking channel. And last year, I only did two videos. Two Sega Head episodes. I did the big one that I tried to get everyone in from Retro Refresh. I managed it like 95%. I couldn't get Dan from the Button Bashers, and that's for the best of reasons. 
the man was having extreme health problems. Uh, I won't go into detail because I don't know how much he would want mentioned online. Uh, he had cancer. He went through chemo chemotherapy. Uh, he was going. He was going through hell. So for fuck's sake, I'm not going to say. Can you be in this video? You know. Um, but he's through it. He's on the mend. He's doing fine. He's clear of cancer. So that's fantastic, of course. Um, but that's why he wasn't in that video. Bad timing. But that video was a shit to make, alright? Obviously it's not as much of a shit as having cancer, but... <laughs> what I'm saying is, that video was a lot of work, a lot of work, and it sapped a lot of the fun out of it. So for a long time I didn't do a Sega Head episode until later that year when I did, um... How to be a gamer, which is just a complete joke. The whole thing's a joke, it's not a game review at all. Which is fine, because it's what I needed. I needed to re-embrace the fun side of a Sega Head episode. And I did, and then I started my second job, and people voted for Shenmue as the next one. It was like, oh, cock, Shenmue's not a small game. That's a big game. And it was like, how can I think of anything funny to go with Shenmue? Like, ah, shit. So I, I'm quite happy with the Shenmue video. I think I had plenty of funny and plenty of game stuff. It was a nice mix. I'm very happy with the video. But at the time, when it was all happening, I was like, oh, God. I just felt like I'm not allowed to enjoy Sega Head episodes anymore. Ah, that was shit. You know, that was real shit. But now... Now it's done, I'm, I'm already well underway for the next Sega, Sega Head episode, because I want to do a collab soon, another Sega Head episode collab, but I thought first I want to do a simple one to keep the fun pure. I don't want to go from one extreme to another, it's like, let's have a fun little slice of things, and then dive into something a bit deeper. That's my plan. So this simpler one, excuse me, <laughs> is um, well underway, things are going well, that's great. But one of the reasons why I'm bringing up the Sega Head episode and the fact that it's in production, I guess you could say, uh, while these videos are the thing that keep me doing YouTube, because I love editing, I know that's weird, I love editing, I love the fun of making a weird video, Sega Head episodes only ever do alright in terms of analytics, in terms of numbers, views, gains, subs, blah blah blah. They only ever do alright. You know, in case you haven't, why would you, in case you haven't gone through the analytical side of what is successful on my channel, it's the dumbest fucking thing. I'm a guy that likes doing jokes, comedy, sarcasm, ridiculous ways. I speak like a normal person. I say fuck shit and damn all the hell fucking time. I don't care. You know, I'm not one of these people trying to be family friendly on YouTube. I will speak to you like a human. YouTube doesn't like that at all, but they prove it because my most successful videos are the dumbest things. My most successful videos are controller reviews. I'm a controller snob. I am. I love playing a game and being sucked into it and knowing the controller feels perfect for that type of game you know uh, if you're playing a game and the controller feels shit I will blame the controller uh, because I, I felt good quality controls and good quality controllers like if you're playing a game and uh, it's a 2d platformer let's say you're playing with the joy-con of a switch there's not a d-pad on there it doesn't fucking feel right I don't like it I will bitch and moan the whole time, so I have other controllers and shit. Well, the most successful Sega Head episode probably hasn't even got a thousand views, but the most successful controller video has got 19,000 odd views. Uh, yeah. And I even tried to prove it to myself a little while ago. Uh, like, working hard on a Sega Head episode, and then I made a controller video because for the longest time, it was this fucking hor horry video controller that was my most successful video. So I thought, I'm going to do another one, another controller review, get a controller, see what I think of it, make a video, stick to the theme of how I do them. Not too long, not tech heavy, just enough, and any info people want to know about um, compatibility with consoles and shit like that can just be written in the description, and I'll tell people that's where it is if you want to know the techie side of shit, you know. And then that video, yeah, boom, 19,000. It was like, motherfucker. Motherfucker. 
And it's like, I mean, I've got another controller uh, review all ready to go. That might be next week's video. It's um, this little puppy here. In case you're interested, that will come up very soon. This isn't a new controller. This is an older one. But it kind of um, swept by. A lot of people seem to have just missed it. And it's not because it's a bad controller. I don't know. I guess 8-BitDo wasn't as well known at the time of that thing. Maybe. I don't know. But you'll get my honest opinion on that in that video. I won't even say fuck all about it now. I'll leave it for that. What's next on my list? Um, oh, uh, this is tied in with that, to be fair, so we'll just mention it here. Yeah, alright, the controller videos do nuts for views. The Sega Head episodes are the most fun ones to do. But I always value your opinion. What do you want to watch? What do you like on this channel? Do you like the Let's Plays? Do you like the Game Poke ones where it's a random topic? Is there a console you think, I want him to talk about that more? Or is there a game where you think, no bugger ever talks about this game? Can, can you? Can you say what you think of it? Or can you do a Let's Play of it so I can see you play and then get your honest opinion of it? So, yeah. Um, I want to know what you would like to see more of. I would also like to know... Uh, if you've got a favorite video that's on this channel, one where you thought, that's my favorite because it's stupid. It's dumb as all fuck. So let me let me know. I really want to know the answers to those questions. Um, the other thing is soon, very soon, let's see, as this video comes out, actually, you know what, this, this won't be the next video because of what's happening next week. I believe it's next week. I'm going to the London gaming market to check out retro games. Um, so normally I bring out a video on a Saturday, but this gaming market thing's on a Sunday. So I'm thinking I'm going to go there, I'm going to record everything I can, put together the video when I get home, and it'll be a late Sunday slash Monday video. So that video is going to be delayed, but it'll help with numbers and... You know, if I put the video out a week later, a thousand other people would have put out their video on the subject, and it's like, why bother? So, yeah, sometimes you've got to do these sort of things for YouTube. But also, when I go to the game market, I am going to do one thing that I don't think a lot of other people are going to do. I'm going to analyse the fuck out of the state of uh, collecting now for certain things, because many of you will know I'm a collector for the Sega Master System and Game Boy. I have got fuck all in the way of Master System games within these past six months and that's because the prices have jumped they're slowly climbing up to that mega drive mega drive costs a dumb amount mega drive games are ridiculous for cost master systems going that way as well and i've got well over 200 master system games and i'm not one of them people that's like oh, i want to get a full pal set or a full american set it's new if it's on master system and i want it i'll get it i originally when i started collecting forever ago thought I want to get all Master System games. Now I don't, for two reasons. One, some games are so obscure, you'd, you're very unlikely to find them. And two, the prices of some of the games are just dog shit, like 400 and up. I can't justify that, I got a family to fucking feed, you know? I just said I gotta move house and sort some shit out like that, it's uh... I can't justify spending hundreds and hundreds on a game. If you're a person who can, fair enough. Do it if you want to do it. I can't. So that's that. <laughs> it's the fucking end of it. So when it comes to collecting, my Master System collecting is not coming to a complete stop, but it's just fuck ever that I get a game now. And that's a real shame because I, I love collecting games. That's why on the last video you saw where I was actually sat in this position talking about video games I collect... It was pretty much all indie games, because I love supporting indie game developers, and some of the shit they come up with is so original in idea. And it was 90% on the Switch. And that's just because that's where the best place to get it. I got some games here that I'm just going to show you I've gotten since then. <coughs> and, um, yeah, they're Switch. An indie game on the Switch I can get for £20. You know what Master System game I can get for £20? None of them. If there's any out there that are £20, I've already got them, and I've had them for ages, and it's a sports game, so woo. You know. If I think, what's what's a Master System game? There's two Master System games I would really like to get, but their prices are 50, 60 quid. There's a Daffy Duck game, 
and there's a Donald Duck game. By sheer coincidence, they're both fucking duck games. They both look awesome and fun, and I'd love to try them, but they're about 50, 60 quid each. It's, it blows my fucking mind that that's what they cost, but that is why I get Switch indie games. This fucking hat's itchy, I might take it off in a minute. Um... But yeah, when I go to the gaming market, we're going to assess the shit out of things because prices are just ridiculous. Retro gaming, retro game collecting now. I remember like 2017, people were saying in podcasts, in YouTube videos, all sorts of shit, this bubble's going to burst soon, the hype's going to get in their plateau, oh, we're soon going to go back down. Oh my god, we were wrong. It's continuously climbed. It's unbelievable how the cost of retro games has never really dropped. It's focused from one console to the next. I mean, at one point, it was NES and nothing else. Then it was Mega Drive and nothing else. Now it's everything else. It, every fucking retro device is just rising in price like shit. There's no cheap option anymore. There's no good place to start. Yeah. No one seems to be collecting modern anymore. That's also partially because of digital. You know, we're in the digital era. Not many people get physical anymore. Yeah. Anyway, where else are we? Oh, uh, news for Live at the Arcade. Uh, for the longest time, Live at the Arcade has not fucking worked. And we've had the ultimate of tech problems. If you don't know what Live at the Arcade is, the Retro Gamer Boy channel. Every Wednesday, there's a live stream at 9 o'clock in the evening, UK time. It's, it's always a laugh. There's always some slagging off. There's always a giggle. It's always fun. There's always games. There's always game talk. It's really good fun. You should check it out. But for the longest time, shit hasn't worked. We've had problems galore. Mike has tried everything. He's spent so much money on gear, um, swapping internet providers. You name it, he did it. And then he tried something last time. And it was just, it was a desperate thing. He was like, I, I can't keep doing this, mate. I'm at my wits end I'm getting so pissed off and stressed he's like this isn't fun anymore well, it's your channel you don't want to do it anymore don't do it anymore he says I'm just going to try this one thing it's the last thing on my fucking list and when he presents when he's doing live at the arcade I see the footage as well you know he sends the footage back to me and I see it that day he says I'm just not going to send it to you so you'll have to watch everything via YouTube there'll be like a 20 second delay or something nuts I'm like I don't care you know better than it not working at all and well fuck me it worked i might be touching wood here and it's like oh shit i said that that was the problem and then it isn't but who knows it just worked because he didn't do that so it's like live at the arcade might f be sticking around at least until the next bloody problem happens buffering at the arcade check that shit out what else oh yeah um speaking of the gaming market thing later this year i'm going to comic-con if you're going look for me i i wish to see you i wish to see the, the person who watches my channel that'd be a laugh and with comic-con more people are going to be there so I'd, I'd love to see see you hello are you there are you going please mm. and I, I i won't be getting retro games at comic-con but i'll be getting a lot of nerdy shit because my missus loves plushies my kids love pokemon i'm a fucking dork so i'll be getting any old thing it's gonna be a laugh and i'm going with a uh, comic rob he's a youtuber so hope to see you there um other than that it's really just things that are like happening in the future one thing is something i've been putting off for ages i say putting off i keep forgetting to do it i'm a cunt i got this requested to do a let's play of hercules on the ps1 I got, I got this. This is immaculate, the condition of this case and disc. It's fucking... It's something else. And I still haven't done a Let's Play of it because I'm a twat. So I need to do that. Other than that, I'm... I think, like, before we get to the games and some of the weird shit I've collected, I'll tell you what I've been playing in my own time. Like I said, Metroid Dread. I keep playing it and then I get so frustrated I have to turn it off for a bit because I know how to beat a boss. The double jump in that game, I don't care what you say, I say it's fucking shit. Double jumps when he feels like. Fucking cunt. So, and Emmys. I hate the bastards. So when I get really annoyed at that, it's like I need to play something else or I'm going to kill someone. So chilled out games. I've been playing some indie games, but they're so short. I'm really going through them now, which I suppose is good. 
Um, <clears throat> but now I'm playing Animal Crossing again, just because it's nice to have a chilled out game. And uh, it's not good playing Metroid Dread when I'm at work during my lunch break, or people see my van shaking about with all of the fucks you can imagine going, Fuck, fucking cunt in Emmy, bastard, metallic pisser. All the shit you can imagine. So I'm doing that. And also, it's the first time in years I've played my 2DS. My mate Rob, comic Rob again, he's doing a Nuzlocke challenge. And the uh, thing is, I love doing the Nuzlocke challenge videos, but those, as far as numbers go, they did terrible. And it hurt the channel to the point where it's like, if I'm going to do Nuzlocke again, I don't think I'm going to do videos for it again because it just, it really fucking sucks the life out of the channel. And when you work so hard on something, you don't want to see it fail just because of something like that. It's like, no, I just won't do it. So I'm doing a Nuzlocke challenge again in my own time on Pokemon X. And uh, it's great fun, but oh my god, when you lose a Pokemon, it's such a cunt. In terms of collecting, before I get into some games, here's something weird I got. I, 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 don't, know, I don't know what the fuck made me buy it, but I wanted it. I used to love Tamagotchi and digital pets growing up. They're fun to collect for, and now if I can get hold of a unique and weird one, sometimes I keep it in the box. Yeah, I'm one of them. You ever watch the anime Demon Slayer? I loved that. That was great. Why is there a Tamagotchi of it? And when I say a Tamagotchi, there's a stupid amount of Tamagotchis for Demon Slayer. I went into my local HMV, and there was, there was like ten different ones. Like, How can you Tamagotchi an anime character? There isn't like a Pokemon or a pet or some bollocks. It, this, you probably can't see, but there's a little sticker for the dude. The Tamagotchi pet is the dude. How? Why? I, I, I don't know. I had to buy it out of curiosity. So there's that. Now let's get into some of the games I got. This one... <sighs> Fire Emblem Warriors, uh, the Three Hopes, silly bastard. <laughs> I haven't played a Fire Emblem game since the first one on Game Boy Advance, and that's not because I don't like them, it's just because they've always been a bit expensive and I've never really given a fuck. Everywhere I look, every store I look, this game goes for about 40 quid, 30 to 35, 30 if you're bloody lucky, but 35 to 40 on average everywhere. I went in my local Smith's toy store with the family, I saw this, brand new, it's still wrapped in plastic if you can or cannot see. On average, this is 35 to 40 quid. Smiths were selling it brand new. 20. 20. So I was like, I guess I'm getting a Fire Emblem game. So as you can tell, I haven't owned it yet. But it's like... 20? Is it a bad game? I got my phone out and quickly looked online thinking, is this like the reject of the Fire Emblem games? It's like, no. Apparently it's... More like Dynasty Warriors. It's like, I like Dynasty Warriors. And so it's like Hyrule Warriors. Hyrule Warriors is a game I've been intending to get for ages, so I guess I should get this. 20 quid. I'm a. It's one of the occasions where you think, if I don't buy that now, I'm gonna kick myself later. So I just bought it. But there you go. That's that. Um, next one is the first Mega Drive game I found in CEX in forever that looked interesting, and it's one I've heard about many times. Sword of a Million. I've heard a lot of things about it. This, apparently it can come with a booklet and a hint book, so two books, I believe. I might be wrong, because this is just the case in the game. It was £20. Well, pound. Oh, that's, that's all right. There was one going for 20 quid on eBay, but every other one was over 25 for case and game. Booklet was obviously more. I thought, fuck it. It's here now, and it's the same as that only other one on eBay. So I've got sort of a million, and the reason I'm showing you now is I have just recorded my Mega Drive collection, so there's going to be a video covering all the games in my collection that are Sega Mega Drive or Genesis, and I bought this like the next day. It's like, well, fuck. I thought I could edit it in, or say bollocks and just talk about it here. I haven't tried it yet because... You know, just got it yesterday. Anyway, um, the other games, this is something I was never going to do. But you know you can get Switch games digitally with a case. I don't know why this is a thing, it's fucking stupid. There was one time my daughter wanted the new Rayman game, I believe it was called Rayman Origins. 
I bought that for her online, thought this is quite cheap. When it comes through, it's the case and everything, and I look in the bottom corner. It says, uh, download code only. I have a case for a download code. What horse shit is this? So I was pretty pissed, and I thought I will never do that again. That time was an accident. But I went in the store the other day, and it was digital games. Right, you can get them uh, two for twenty. I thought, hmm, as long as I make sure that they're cheaper than the digital ones online, then I win. One is a game my wife has, and I thought it'd be cool for me to try it out uh, because she had it digital. The only way I could try it is to play it on her Switch. That won't ever happen. If we ever get a chance to play games, she's on her Switch. So, I've got Yonder. As you can see from this bullshit down here, digital code only. The good thing is, while it's stupid getting a code, I got a spare case. If I get a really cool game and it's got the physical car, and let's say the case is trashed, spare case. I mean, what the fuck, I'm not losing out on anything. I'll have the sleeve as a spare, but woo, it's digital anyway. So, Yonder, it looks pretty cool. Um, when the wife was playing it, I got a lot of... I don't know, it was like... Gameplay-wise, was kind of like Breath of the Wild meets Harvest Moon? Like... It's, it's weird. But it looked quite fun, and she enjoyed it, so I thought, I'll try that shit. Mainly to make the deal, because here's a game I've had on my watch... Um, wish list on the Switch for quite a while. Stranded Sails, Explorers of the Cursed Islands. It's been on my wish list for a while, so I thought... It looks, it looks interesting. It looks kind of weird. It's bloody farm simulating again. But, I don't know. That, it just looked like an interesting game. The other one... So, you remember I said that I like digital pets and all that when growing up? Well, this is Digimon Survive. There's, I think there's a new one coming out, or is out. Digimon World? That one looks fucking awesome. But Digimon Survive was like that sodden Fire Emblem game I found it in the store for 20. Thinking... Okay! I mean, on the back it looks bloody good. And I like Digimon, series 1 and 2 on anime, it was fucking awesome. Um, games, the PS1 game is dog shit, <laughs> I'm sorry, but it is. Other than that, I only ever tried one other Digimon game, it was on PS4, what was that called? If I can remember the name, I'll put a cover here, if I don't put a cover here, you'll know it's because I couldn't remember the name. <laughs> but that game was just dull as shit. This one doesn't look dull, so there's that. But in terms of, like, Mon games with monsters, I found an indie game that's essentially a Pokemon clone, but it looks so interesting. It's called Monster Crown. And I got this for, I think it was 20 again, so that's convenient. Oh no, so, uh, beg your pardon, it was two, 22 pound. Yes, 22 pound. And it looks fun, and it's got alternative endings. You can tell it has, because on the back it says, Create your monster legacy in a dangerous world to become a savior or dark messiah. Yeah, so I'll put some gameplay up of that there for you to check out. Um, I, I thought it was a pretty good looking game, so yeah. Anyway, I've covered a lot in this video today. That's why I don't do these Let's Chat videos too often. But this is the sort of stuff I wanted to cover that r wouldn't really fit in another video. You know, alright, some of them games I could have talked about in a collection video, but it's like, fuck it, I'm doing a chat video anyway, so I'll just cover it. Fuck it. Um, yeah. I hope you uh, get to respond in a comment to some of the things I've asked you today. I hope to see some of you at Gaming Market or Comic Con. Um, yeah, there you are. I hope you enjoyed the video. I don't do too many of these. Next week will be the Gaming Market one, but it will be a day late because the Gaming Market is on Sunday. So you'll either get it the Sunday or the Monday. There you go. Video has gone on for long enough. I apologize. Thank you very much for watching and thank you very much for staying subscribed. These days that's harder to get than getting someone to even click subscribe. So shut up me. I'll see you next time.